Hi, this is Denver Riddle from Color Grading Central. We're starting to get into the really fun part of looks creation. In this video tutorial, I'll be covering how to create popular looks. So what is considered a popular look? Well, it's any look that has been popularized by a Hollywood film or a photochemical process. Some examples of these are films like Saving Private Ryan, the cliche film to copy The Matrix, Slumdog Millionaire, and big blockbusters like Transformers. Looks have been immortalized by these films, and I'm going to share with you how to add these looks to your footage in Final Cut Pro 10. So let's do some color grading. One of the most popular looks, and the one we'll start with, is the bleach bypass look, which you've seen in Saving Private Ryan. Bleach bypass is a photochemical technique that results in a black and white image over top of a color image. The look this creates is reduced saturation and increased contrast and graininess. We can duplicate this look in post manually and there's even a video effect for it built into Final Cut Pro 10. The video clip you see here is one that I use often in testing and creating different looks. It's a pretty neutral image and so it will allow us to see how the looks look over a wide tonal range. Anyways, enough about that. The quickest way to create this look is with the saturation and exposure tab. We'll first create the contrast by lowering the shadows, crushing them. And then we'll boost the highlights, sending them way into clip. Now it's okay here since bleach bypass is an extreme look. Then we'll go into the saturation tab and lower the global saturation. Okay, that's it. A very simple look to create. Now on to the next method. I'll reset this look. And then down in the timeline, we'll create a copy of the clip. And drag the duplicate directly over top of the original so that it lines up perfectly. In the top clip, we'll lower the saturation completely so all that we're left with is a grayscale image. Then if we scroll down in the parameters, we'll see our compositing option where we'll choose overlay is the composite mode. And voila! We can even dial the amount of the look applied by adjusting the opacity. If it's too strong, we'll just dial it back. Really cool, isn't it? And of course, the easiest way is to just use Final Cut Pro 10's Bleach Bypass effect found in the Looks menu. So let me reset this and change the compositing back to normal. And then I'll add Final Cut Pro 10's Bleach Bypass effect. We don't have any controls here other than we can control the intensity to which the look is applied. So what I would suggest if you want even more control is to use one of these manual methods. Next, I'll share with you how to do a proper black and white treatment or rather, I'll show you how to use Final Cut Pro 10's built-in black and white video effect to achieve a really cool black and white look. So you might ask, well why not just kill the saturation to get a black and white look? Well, the reason is, is that it doesn't duplicate the look of black and white film stock. This is because our cameras have color sensors. Therefore, just killing the saturation leaves us with a grayscale image still containing Luma information in the red, green, and blue channels. <laughs> that probably doesn't make any sense, but it's the best technical explanation I can give. So let me just show you the difference. Okay, now with everything reset, in the bottom image, I'll apply the black and white a video effect. And then so that we can compare the two, I'll adjust the opacity of the top clip, which of course I need to take the saturation out of. Okay, and then by adjusting the opacity, we can see the clip underneath, which has the black and white video effect applied. At first glance, there's no difference. It's because there actually isn't. But coming back to the parameters tab of the black and white video effect, I'll pick a different color here, which will effectively remap the Luma information in the red, green, and blue channels, thus giving us a closer simulation of black and white film stock. 
moving the slider back and forth. Ah, you see that? This is a really cool feature of Final Cut Pro 10, so I suggest you use it if you want to create an authentic black and white look. Now I know many of you will want to create vintage looks, as these are increasingly popular. Unfortunately though, I haven't found any good ones in Final Cut Pro 10, and they're actually very difficult to create in Final Cut Pro 10 because of the limitations on the software. I am pleased to inform you, however, that I've developed a great workaround that's available for purchase as my vintage signature look in my Luster Grades preset pack. Now let me give you a, a brief demonstration of this look, and I know that you're going to love it. While I'm applying this, I'll explain the characteristics of vintage looks generally. Vintage looks tend to have either red or magenta shadows, and in many cases elevated or milky blacks. Also, the dynamic range in many instances is compressed in the highlights. So what I need to do here is just make the last adjustment by changing the composite mode to screen. And wow, don't you just love it? It's actually my favorite look. So please check it out if you're interested and also be sure to download my free grade presets. Okay, moving along. The infamous blockbuster or orange till look. This look was made popular in Michael Bay's Transformers. What's really cool is Final Cut Pro 10 has this look as the till and orange effect. So let's add it. Of course I need to reset all of these. Okay, now we'll get it applied. So with it applied, we can't make adjustments to the colors themselves, but the other parameters that we have are very useful. We can control how much the look is applied, keep the highlights from clipping, preserve the natural color of the skin tones so they aren't overpowered by the look, and adjust the shadows. Now the mechanics of the blockbuster look are very simple and rely on the concept of warm cool contrast. What this does is it helps our eyes to focus and cause the skin tones to pop since skin tones are the complementary color of the teal shadows. I love the blockbuster look for this reason. It just simply looks great. So let me show you how to create the look manually. Over here in the color tab, we'll push blue cyan into the shadows. And then we'll warm up the highlights and or the midtones by pushing yellowish orange into them. This creates that awesome color contrast. So I would suggest using the teal and orange effect if you're going for this look and you need to create it on the fly. Alright, on to our last popular look. I'll be covering cross-processing, which is another photochemical process and the Russian roulette of film processing. In this process, the film is bathed in chemicals intended for completely different types of film. This was discovered by accident by photographers and has become the most popular look in fashion magazines and on band covers. Final Cut Pro 10 doesn't have this as a video effect, but I'll teach you how to create it. The main idea behind the look is that there is contrast of color in the shadows and highlights with any number of variations. We'll start by creating the most popular variation by pushing blue into the shadows, yellow into the highlights, and then we'll offset the shadows by pushing the midtones in the opposite direction of the shadows. Then we'll just play with the exposure and saturation a little bit. That looks good. I'll reset this and then let me show you another variation. I'll do the opposite of the first one by pushing magenta into the shadows, green into the highlights, and because I don't want the skin tones looking too green, I'll offset this last adjustment by pushing the midtones puck in the opposite direction of the highlights. Okay, that's it. Cross processing is an extreme look and will take a bit of finessing to get it where you want it. I also have developed some really cool cross process looks that are available for download and for purchase in my Luster Grades preset pack. So let me just show you those real quickly. What's cool about these is they can be added quickly. And believe me, creating looks is a painstaking process that can take a lot of time to develop. 
So that's the first one. And let me show you the second. If you're interested in any of these, click the links below. I think that pretty much sums it up. So let me conclude our popular looks tutorial. There are some other popular looks out there, but the ones that I've shown you are the most popular. I may perhaps introduce you to more popular looks in the future if I get enough requests for it. I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope that you have fun in duplicating popular looks. Thanks for watching.